One of the more basic ideas in biological chemistry is the idea of organic compounds. Now, uh, the name organic literally means it's alive. And what scientists found out a long time ago is a lot of the molecules that are in living creatures are actually based on carbon. And so now we call these carbon-based molecules organic molecules. Now, why is carbon used so much? Carbon's a very useful atom because it can form four bonds and pretty much most of the bonds that it forms are covalent because it's fairly strong but not too strong in terms of its electronegativity. So in this example here, it's bound to four different elements and each one of these bonds is covalent or polar covalent. Now, in the big group of organic compounds, perhaps the most useful of them are the organic polymers. Now, I'll get into what a polymer is in just a moment, but the four basic groups are the lipids, which are things like, well, fat and waxes. There's proteins, which make up things like your muscles, your hair, your fingernails, the front of your eye. Carbohydrates, which make up the sugars and the starches that we love to eat. And the nucleic acids, which makes up those very important molecules called DNA and RNA. Now, a polymer, as I mentioned pre previously, what that is is a long molecule made out of a bunch of smaller molecules called monomers. It's kind of like how a train is actually a long string of train cars that have been hooked together. We call the individual train cars of a polymer monomers, like I said. And within the lipids, they have different monomers than the proteins, which have different monomers than the carbohydrates and the nucleic acids. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at how do we link these monomers together. Over here, I've drawn a couple of monomers. These would be monosaccharides, which are the individual monomers of carbohydrates that when you link them together, two monosaccharides make a disaccharide. More than two, you start getting into you don't care how many, so you just call them many of these saccharides or polysaccharides. So here's one monosaccharide or sugar. Here's another monosaccharide. To get them to hook together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the OH group from here. And I'll just put that over to the side. There's now a bond here that's open to join to this oxygen, but it's already got the two bonds that it normally needs to make. So I'll just pull that hydrogen off. And now that oxygen will easily bond to that carbon. And now I have a disaccharide or dimer generically. Now you notice I pulled out water from it. What do we call this process? Well, what do you call it when you remove water from something? That's called dehydration. This pen's dying. Goodbye. Dehydration. So we pulled out our water. And why did we pull out water? We pulled out water in order to make something. Now scientists don't like to use the term make. So instead they use the term synthesis because it sounds cooler and more expensive. So it's called dehydration synthesis. Okay? And all of the organic polymers are made through the same basic process. You pull a hydrogen off of one monomer, you pull an OH group off of another, and they link together like this. So, how do I run this in reverse? Well, Remember I had that water molecule earlier? If only I could break this and put that hydrogen there. Well, let me go ahead and do that. I, well, let me just make a really long bond there. So I've broken that off. That means this bond here will break. But that carbon right now is unstable. It needs something. <gasps> what if I add that there? That's it. Now, in order to make this happen, what did I have to do? I had to break this water in half. What's a root word that means water? Hydro. And there's another root word called lice, which means to break or split. Let me move these out of the way. And I just turned that into a process name, so it's called hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is how do we split our polymers back into the monomers that we started with. And that's organic molecules.